We are getting ready for the show. We need another 5 minutes or so, 10 minutes or so. I'm going to spend the time to introduce myself. I'm the producer of this show uh, and my firm, because my firm sponsored this, so I'm the right this. So I'm going to spend 5 minutes talking about myself. <laughs> I won't get another chance for that tonight. Um, so, about 15 years ago, I was uh, running a hedge fund in Florida. Um, and I was this illusion about my, my career choice because uh, what I see in the financial industry was was uh, pretty, uh, uh, how, how to put it, Grim. it's not kosher. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Corrupt. Um, corrupt, yes. So I had this illusion about my career choice and then one day out of the blue, I got a phone call from my doctor and he said, uh, Michael, I can't, be your, I can't be your doctor anymore. <laughs> So I already feeling bad about myself and my doctor called to fire me. <laughs> Who has that experience, huh? It turned out that he explained to me that he was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And he was calling me to transfer to another doctor. And in the end, he said, Michael, I, uh, you're the only finance guy I know. Can you help me? So that was a case of mistaken identity because he thought I'm a financial advisor, but I wasn't. I was a hedge fund manager, which is, supposed, which is not supposed to help people. <laughs> <laughs> but he didn't, since he's a doctor, so he didn't know that. So he called me, and then I'm in a situation I cannot say no to him. I envisioned that he was lying on his death bed and making the call. So I ended up in his house, uh, sitting down with his uh, wife and two children. They have been crying for a long time and their eyes was even, uh, they, they look sicker than, than, uh, than the doctor himself. Uh, anyway, I helped them organize their personal finance, which was immense, in a mess. Uh, and then three months later, he passed away. Uh, I stayed on board to help his family and children making the necessary adjustment. And they were very grateful. And one day, uh, the wife, just hold my hand and say, Michael, I don't know how I can thank you enough because without you, I wouldn't be able to handle all of this. And that's the first time in my life that I feel like I've done something meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yes, I must have done something meaningful before, but I didn't realize that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but it was the first time I thought, wow, I, I, I have a really meaningful impact on a, on a family. So I, uh, I convert my company, I change my company from a hedge fund to a, to a wealth management firm, helping people taking care of their personal finance. So I guess I have another two minutes, so I quickly tell you what wealth management involves. Like after working for 15 years or so, I learned that most people have these five or six areas of financial concerns. Right? Number one is investment or wealth preservation. How to grow your wealth. How to grow your heart earned well, heart earned well in a steady fashion. Number two is tax mitigation. How to pay as little tax as possible legally. Okay. And the number three is uh, asset protection. Like for some profession, in high risk profession, asset protection is important. It means how to preserve your heart earned well from being taken like unjustified. Uh, so, asset protection. Number four is, I call it air protection. How do you like take care of your heirs and children if something unfortunate happened to you, right? None of us can guarantee that we won't, when we go out the door, we won't be run over by a truck, right? What we can do is uh, make arrangements so that we will have the peace of mind when we get run over by a truck. <laughs> yes, I can help you accomplish that. Uh, <laughs> okay, that's number four. Number five is uh, charitable planning. Right? How to maximize your impact uh, to a society. At the same time, you, you minimize your tax. That's called charitable planning. And number six, for some folks who are business owners, uh, I help them, it's called business planning, help them, uh, they spend their whole life building up a business, uh, and I help them capture their lifetime of hard work, their values, when they retire. So these are the five areas that I help. Uh, it sounds very complicated, but 
I'm going to use one minute to show you how, how it can be done. Very simple. If you think about my job, my job is really take away the worry and fear and uncertainty and bring about order and peace of mind. And I show you how it is done. Okay. Uh, for that, I need a, a random number below 100. Somebody give me a shout a number below 100. 26. 26. I heard 26. Okay, good. Twenty-six. That's a beautiful number. Yeah, and I'm gonna put, put some random number in this box. And I just randomly put some number in here. Uh, Random, right? It's like just like our financial life. It's pretty disordered. It's random number, right? So my job is to bring about order. So can you head up the row here? How about this? Look at the second line. Third line. Four line. What about the column? The first column? Second column? Third column? Four column? So this is about bringing order to a chaotic financial life. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And then, I don't stop there. I'm going to do it in a way that blow your mind. <laughs> about and beyond your expectations. How to do that? Why don't you end up this line? Yeah. How about that? How about end up this line? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I will get this box. Oh. <laughs> oh my God. I will this box. Wow. Where do we sign up? No, <laughs> Wait, I'm not done yet. <laughs> How about add up this corner of this box? One, two, three, four. How much is it? Oh yeah. So that's bringing about order for your financial life in a way that blow your mind. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, has, has, has the, uh, the, the playbill, right? So I'm going to offer uh, 10 people here a free second opinion review. Uh, right, if you, if you, no, no, don't, don't hold your hand. <laughs> if, you, if your financial life is in good order, then don't, don't, don't uh, you don't have to do that. But if you feel like you're, your financial life needs some ordering, then uh, then in my preview at, the, at the bottom, there is a place to sign up for my second opinion review. And look at the preview. Take, take it up now. Take it up now. Yes, the preview. Right at the bottom. Yes. I it's first come first serve. So as I go out to get the get the uh, the performance, it'll take me about maybe one minute. You guys, if you want to, you guys can. Uh, and just use your cell phone to submit the request. Got it? Yes. Yes? yes. Was it a fun exercise? Yes.
first one. Yeah. Right, we're all like, okay. Oh, Diane. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that was impressive. Yeah. No, Koei's already. Okay. Yeah. Woo! Okay, perfect. So, uh, to start it off, you got for our, uh, our their, their big boxer, Dr. Brick. The second. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Dr. Brick. And everything you're about to hear is all from the human voice and mouth. I hope you enjoy this. Make some noise. Everything you see is completely made 
it up. We just told you that. So, <laughs> but some past people we've done. We're going to ask you for a historical figure in a minute. And some past people we've done have been Amelia Earhart. We've done uh, Jackie Robinson, and uh, we've done uh, Rick James. Why? I know. Um, uh, I think we did Gerald Ford when we were here before. Of course, Bethesda wants a president. Um, so I do politics. We don't get enough. Um, so uh, we're going to do some of that for you. So before we ask you for a historical figure or icon, make sure it's someone you know a little bit about, because we might ask you some follow-up questions about the person. Okay? All right. Sound good? All right. So on the count of three, you're going to shout out a historical figure or icon. One, two, three. That's Francis Scott Key. Uh, okay, what was one over here? Al Capone. Al Capone. <laughs> All right, Al Capone. <laughs> All right, uh, Francis. We'll do Francis Scott Key later at the lounge. Uh, and Jose Graham, go away. Uh, okay. Cool. So, Al Capone. Now, what was Al Capone known for? What was he famous for? He was a gangster. He was a murderer in New York City, right? In Chicago. Looks how much I, that shows how much I know. Now, someone already got the bright idea to pull out their phone. You are free to pull out your phone during this portion of the show. Uh, pull out Wikipedia, Google Al Capone, because we're going to be asking you some questions. Okay? Um, so Al Capone was a gangster. He was a killer. Someone said in Chicago. Okay. What? Bootlegger. He was a bootlegger. Now, what does bootlegger mean? Yeah, he's, uh, alcohol. Sold alcohol illegally yeah. during prohibition. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to know a bit, a bit about Al Capone's formative years. Let's think about his childhood, any siblings he might have had, where his parents came from. Do we know anything about Al Capone's formative years? He was born in Brooklyn. Say again? He slapped a teacher. He slapped a teacher. So we're starting with the crucial details. I love it. He slapped a teacher. Do we know at what age this happened? Uh, it was in grade school. It was in grade school. Fourth grade. Uh, fourth born grade. In New York. Young to be slapping a teacher. <laughs> what was this? Born in New York. Born in New York. Anything else about his born tears? Perhaps family, relatives, Italian. anything at all? Italian immigrant, so descended from Italian blood. Excellent. Anything else? Maybe where, where he was born and then when he moved to Chicago. In his early 20s, what was that? They got him on tax evasion. They got him on tax evasion. Uh, so that might have happened later on in his life. Say again? He became a bodyguard He became a bodyguard in Chicago. Do we know to what establishment or to whom? Any celebrity? Was he like a door person? He started as a bouncer in where, sorry? Brothels. In brothels. Yeah, it's a family friendly show, so we'll, we'll, title, we'll title it sensitively. Anything else? We all get? He was known for the St. Valentine's Massacre. What was that, sorry? He was known for the St. Valentine's Massacre. Known for the St. Valentine's Massacre. Excellent. Thank you very much. Grant. Okay, great information so far. I want to know what era was this when you came about? Like, when was he born? 1899. 1899 and 1947. Born 1899, so I'm guessing he kind of has come up was during Prohibition, which was 20s, right? 20s. Early 20s, okay. And then let's move forward a little bit. He became like a big and honcho gangster. Eventually he got he got got for tax evasion. What time was that? 1931. 1931, they got him for tax evasion, and they locked him away until he died. He died at age 47. More about that later. Also, I want to know, there, he was probably a very divisive person, so I'm sure there were some people that loved him and some people that hated him. Who were the people in his life that loved him? Probably alcoholics were a big fan. <laughs> uh, but other people, did he have like a gang affiliation? Was he a blood or a crip? Should we know? <laughs> like, did he have a, did his gang have a name? The mob. Thank you very much. <laughs> five, points. five points gang. Okay. Five points gang. Beautiful. And then, so who were the people that hated him? I'm guessing. Elliot Ness. Elliot Ness. Elliot Ness. And who's Elliot Ness? 
FBI. FBI, famous uh, bounty hunter, right? Well, capture your bounty like Elliot Ness, the Fuji's. Okay. So Elliot Ness, FBI, was always on his tail. Five points, gang. We already got that. Thanks anyway. Uh, and okay, so that was probably like a big foe of his, and probably the FBI in general. How did the general public feel about? Him? Do we know? Was he like? Respected or kind of hated by the general public? Fear. What? Fear. Fear. Feared by the public, right? And he killed a lot of people and then probably ordered a lot of hits later on. Okay? He had some affiliation with a political party. He had an affiliation with a political party. Do we know which party? So he has the bad guy. The bad guy. So the Republicans? <laughs> <laughs> um, cool. So let's talk about the Saint Valentine's no Saint Valentine's Massacre. Yes. Is that what it's called? Uh, tell me about that. 1929. 1929. Alright, so it was like probably like he was like on the rise or like a, towards the height of his powers then. Yeah. What what was the context for that? Who was massacred? Oh, okay. So they were rival, not just the, not just the feds, but also rival gangs, kind of fighting it out for control of Chicago in the Midwest, right? It was, it was like the morning of Valentine's Day. And it was the morning of Valentine's Day. Lined up against the wall and shot by four unknown Cool, cool. But it damaged his image because he was thought of as the modern day Robin. Oh, so he, so when he was on the come up, he was actually kind of like <coughs> painting himself and seen by some people as like a champion of the people fighting the man. But then there was like a, a bad kind of turning point in his like PR basically where he took it too far. Got it, got it. What was that actually makes me think of something else. What was his goal? Why was he doing all of this? It was the Irish against the um, Italians. Italians. Yeah. Italians. He was he Italian. Yeah. So he kind of had, it was like kind of like a, a sort of like a nationalistic, like my people kind of will kind of be on the come up and be on the rise and take over this new land because we're all immigrants, but this is like us staking our claim. Here. And they did it disguised as policemen. He's what? They did it disguised as policemen. They did it disguised as policemen. Say Valentine's Day, you mean? Yes. That's pretty impressive. Okay, and then, um, so what's his legacy? We, we talked about them eventually. They weren't able to get him for kind of the main stuff that he did, but the FBI was eventually able to get him on tax evasion, which Correct. is pretty wild. Um, and then they locked him up, and then he died in jail of syphilis. Is that right? At Alcatraz. At Alcatraz, which is an uh, island in San Francisco, uh, impenetrable fortress of uh, jailing criminals. Um, cool. And how's, how's he remembered today? Like, feared, but like also kind of like weirdly sort of respected as this like dark anti-hero. He remembered right? his Scarface. And he was, he was, he was, a, he was a, a mob boss. So Al Capone is For seven Scarface, years. right? Scarface. Okay, so he was, cool. I think he had, he had one child. Uh, sorry? He had one child. And he had one child. Do you know the child's name? No. Was that with a, was that with a wife that he yeah. had? Yeah. 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 May, her name was. Her name was May? Yeah. Okay. Is she also like Italian, part of the kind of larger Italian family sure. mob network? Sure. sure. All right. Cool. Thank you. All right. Oh, she was, she was Irish? In 1918. Uh oh Romeo and Juliet action. Okay. Wow. Capulets and Italians. Uh, <laughs> wonderful. All right. Thank you so much for all that wonderful information. Uh, you can turn off your phones. We got uh, a lot of wonderful information about Al Capone. So he was born in New York, Italian immigrant, came to Chicago, thought of himself as a Robin Hood, but then ended up engaging in the St. Valentine's Day massacre, which turned him into a killer and more of a dark anti-hero. <clears throat> Married May, an, an Irish woman and ended up uh, dying at Alcatraz of syphilis at age 47. All right, thank you so much. We now present to you the improvised, historical, hip hop Al Capone. How does a man get 
in so much trouble. Finally brought down by the untouchables. Made so much money, stashes and stashes. Eventually got him on the taxes. Let me say, yes, with fast flow. How did this man go all the way to Chicago? And bring so much violence, style that was military from poor beginnings in Italy. Great peace soup, he was looking stylish. He killed the men, but he loved the women of Irish. He, you know him, he did not work for NATO. He shot him up and roasted him like a potato. Bitter, but if we put some thought and 
my dream to be the mayor of Chicago, to own it, to run it. Oh, you'll be more than the mayor. You'll be the king of Chicago. But Chicago doesn't have a constitutional monarchy. <laughs> yes. <laughs> what do you mean, Father, specifically? <laughs> you know what the old country we used to say? If there's a potato that you want, <laughs> You got to grab it for yourself. You got to an orange by way of Wales. <laughs> by way of many things. And now by way of America. The new country. The new home. And the new potato. <laughs> Do you catch my metaphor, my boy? I it's know. very complicated and layered. Like a potato. Like a good baked potato. <laughs> One layer. I know. Accent is troubling you. <laughs> it's not just your accent, it's also your imagery. <laughs> the immigrant experience is a very complicated one. Well, you know what? Why did you explain it to me? It's <laughs> much <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey! 
time. <laughs> you know, it's just the Italian style. <laughs> Al, Al, do you want us to leave you alone with this beautiful Irish broad? <laughs> you guys can stay. Why is that guy who stole his castle and messing everything up? I'm sorry, sometimes I sit on my head. <laughs> Trust, I say no, I say no, do it! Show me how to do it! Sit on your head right now, Tommy! Get off the floor! It's more of a, of a, of a, of a metaphorical sitting. Listen, I carried all the money you brought me. It doesn't add up with the liters of whiskey that I gave you. You take the whiskey, two, two, uh, the fire. Speakeasy, sorry, boy, sorry. Okay, when you get to the speakeasy, you ask for the to eat these chips. Tony Baloney! Tony Baloney. How could we forget a simple name like that? How could we simply take a goddamn name? The mnemonic device is still there. When you find Tony Baloney, I fixed your drink. <laughs> She's a broad and a bartender. <laughs> we'll be voting next. Wow, look at you. What is this, Irish whiskey? Irish Italian whiskey. <laughs> like me. Don't mind if I tell them more do. I'm sorry, what? <laughs> whiskey joke. Don't listen to any stooges. They're idiots. <laughs> Run the area, but are you sure you know what you're getting into? Yeah, she got a real good head on her shoulders. You might fall in love. And, and she's on the other side of the, the turf floor. Listen, as I told you before, the only thing I fall in love with is money, power, and respect. Yeah. No broads. Yeah, no broads. Okay, now what is the last thing you do? Speak easy. Tony Baloney, give him the whiskey. And then finally, the most important, crucial part what do you do? Take the shots! No! <laughs> you get the money! Get the money! Get the money! Ah, get the money. I am so stupid! Hey, 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 hey! <laughs> Do that on your own time, all right? Listen, there's a shipment out back. If you mess this up, it'll be your butts. My butt? But I love using that to sit on my head. I can't yeah. use that. <laughs> So maybe you'd like to know a little bit about myself. This bar nets me a thousand dollars a month, so I got money. I can play the trombone, so I got talent. I know how to fix a good drink, so I got respect. For bartending. <laughs> money, talent, and respect. Those are the qualities I have. I gotta say, I like this place. I've never seen such a fine establishment. I built it myself with my hands. <laughs> I love uh, all the details. Thank the, you. Uh, rafters, uh, Nice. Thank you. Well, of course, I'm Italian and Irish, so my family are versed in Italian and also the language of the Catholic text, Latin. And of course, Italian and Latin are related. As such, I've got my family motto written in wood, <laughs> carved there in the original Latin. Read it out. <laughs> Subject, object, oh, no, or word, word, or I can you? read. <laughs> Slap my fourth grade teacher. Uh, ergo. <laughs> Which, of course, is Latin for therefore. Uh, some am, as in ego sum, I am. So, therefore, am. Good start already. <laughs> uh, Latin. <laughs> Therefore, and Latin. <laughs> you wouldn't understand it. It's a metaphor. It's layered like a potato. <laughs> I like you. You're handsome, you're strong, you're intelligent. I don't mind you either. Uh, like I said, I like this uh, establishment. <laughs> Honestly, I've never seen such a fine glass in my entire life. My name's May. Pleasure to meet you. My name's Al I don't have a middle name. <laughs> I don't have a last name, I'm just 
resume. <laughs> One word, like Jesus. <laughs> oh shit! A month. Oh, that's even better. <laughs> I see you're a man who's good with numbers. <laughs> oh, Virgo <Ergo> sum. <laughs> What it needs is money, it can transact with speed, and then you and me, it could be a roller coaster. I can mix with you like a whiskey and cola, cause that's what I mean, cause it couldn't be shoddy, cause just like this wine, you've got a great body. I'm telling you, Slick Ouija, you wanna know why they call it the Windy City? Yes! <laughs> it's just blowing, I wanna know how to go. Damn! I got one thing to say. The Windy City's really, really windy in May.
in sight must be easy. We gotta go and figure out where the money trail is happening. We gotta step in where the little old suits and act the captain. We gotta go in, pretend we don't know what's happening. We're gonna get all the facts we need. We're gonna get all the facts we need. seems about as convincing as mine. <laughs> We're from Larchmont, just west of Wales. Just west of Wales? West of Wales is the Irish Sea. <laughs> Maybe even further west of Wales, in Ireland. Precisely. <laughs> Spoken like a true Irish man. <laughs> dilly 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 dilly. <laughs> and you? Where are you from? Same. <laughs> <laughs> so are you gonna buy us a stiff drink or what? Stiff drink. We only drink Irish whiskey. Catch. <laughs> I just caught air. <laughs> wow. Catch. Oh. It's amazing how you can throw that with absolutely no liquid coming out of the cup. <laughs> yes, it is amazing. Okay, sneak it off your liquid. Where uh would you say we might uh, find the the source of all this? You know, just 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 to just to see if we could get our own. You know, we're thinking of opening up our own branch. You want to know where I get this whiskey from? I would like to start a franchise. In so these times of prohibition. <laughs> yes. Well, well, we'd be happy to give you a cut. To give me a what? Give you a cut. Oh, a cut of the money. I thought you were inciting violence. <laughs> <laughs> you see, I don't trust a lot of people. But you're Irish lad, so I suppose in this instance I could make an exception. Give me one reason why I should trust you. Ergo... So... Latin. Oh. What he said? A great Catholic motto. Every Irish boy knows it. Inscribed upon his heart. Not his actual heart, but you know. No, that would be ludicrous. Yes. <laughs> well then, the whiskey I get from a supplier down at the docks. Now you might be wondering, <laughs> docks in Chicago, we're by a lake. Ha! <laughs> Trick. <laughs> Trick, Jim. Yes. Trick. There, there could be docks on lakes too. Yeah, can't you? Yes, double bluff. <laughs> yes, you're smart. The whiskey gets delivered at night. By train, then by ship, then by plane, then by train again. <laughs> Might there be a shipment coming tomorrow? Yes. I heard. I heard. There's lots of deals happening on Valentine's Day. Yes, there's a shipment coming in to Lake Michigan, coming in to the docks here in Chicago. And if you open up the shipment, you'll find a plane. And inside the plane, you'll find the train. And inside the train, you will find the vehicle. And that's where you find the illicit material. Okay. So are you saying again that it goes from the plane to another train? And from a train to a boat, okay? And then after that, boat to another train. Yes, it's true. Don't you see? Because it goes by your being called the lives in the sea. Actually, I correct myself, I made a mistake. Technically, in this instance, it's a big thing.
got this big owl, you're a boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, the ladies love you. Come on, you got money, you got power, you got respect, you got a sexy accent. <laughs> oh, just calm down, calm down. Oh, my boy. <laughs> <laughs> you stand there all night. I've been standing here for four hours. <laughs> You see me pacing around, questioning myself. Yeah, you've been practicing your speech. Go for it. <laughs> hey, I seen you two days ago. But now is the day that my love has grown. I love you even though you come from the land of potatoes. <laughs> My true love so strong I want to get you And kiss on your face And take you back to my place Yeah, just in that Greta Garbo, in that Stella Adler. 
Butler yeah. or Constantine Stanislavski's students. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Half my family, massacred. My father was slaughtered. Dead. I mean, uh, sir. <laughs> <laughs> I know who she is. We we have got a record on her. She's she's the daughter of the Irish mob boss. What is she doing here? Are you May? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me, May. <laughs> Any questions? Uh, Half my family was slaughtered, and when I came in here with that thick Irish accent, it's because I get angry because it's my Irish heritage. Half my family were slaughtered. We know, we know. We've been trying to find the guy who done it this whole time. We totally understand that you want to seek protection in these trying times. Speaking of protection, I think I might be able to help you. Every venue needs protection. I know somebody, somebody very dear to me who sometimes moonlights as a bodyguard huh. at a brothel, which is, of course, a place where they make soup. A brothel. <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfectly family-friendly establishment. Well, <laughs> it's right next door. You'll find him outside at midnight. He'd be, he'd be happy to cut you a deal. And cut? And by cut, I mean make, not hurt you. <laughs> but I thought you were inciting physical violence. No, no. <laughs> so Jack, quite the opposite. No, we'd like to work with you. If you come with us, if you join us, you'll never you get touched. <laughs> I'm on. I'm on. I'm on. I was gonna say that sounds really dull. Yeah, yeah. We kind of worked on this in the name of some weird thing, but we'll never be as cool as an anti hero. Look, if you help us, we'll help you. If you can give us some of the information we're looking for. Some protection of our own. <laughs> we can offer you very much. We can offer you very much. <laughs> you can offer me very much. <laughs> I very much. We mean all <laughs> We can offer we can offer you very much. We can offer you very much. I am very much. We need a lot. Okay, if you tell us where Al Capone is, then we can make sure that you're not arrested. We can make sure that you're not in a police car so to swerve it. No, we can just get make sure you only get community service. Yeah. 
I got a lot of 1099s. <laughs> and it's kind of like nerves, and it's where you get taxed 40% for doing your own thing. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Freelancing. <laughs> I really, really, you know, wanted to get some help doing my taxes for free, but they won't offer any free help to do it. They just outlawed all that, so, you know, we heard we could come to you for help. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm just a humble, soup-making, brothel bodyguard. <laughs> interesting, interesting. What is that, a little... Is that a little Italian wedding soup? Huh? Yeah, it's a little minestrone. Oh, minestrone, minestrone. minestrone. <laughs> what you guys say you're doing again? <laughs> trying to do our taxes. Yeah, we're yeah taxes to... for what? Just a couple average jokes. A couple, couple average, average jokes. jokes to do what? We move this over here. This what are you moving? What is the thing? Where is it going? That's the deductibles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are your occupations? <laughs> you know, I'm retired. As I remind you, yeah, I don't just make the soup here. I also kick the butts. <laughs> you ever heard of an actuary before? <laughs> yeah, I've heard of an actuary. An actuary is someone who uh, says probabilities for insurance companies to make sure that they make money. <laughs> I said I know what it is! So, uh, let's explain Let me give you a clue as to who we are. Yeah. You'll find it at the bottom of this hole. See, that's Italian real soup. Italian real soup. What the hell are you guess? talking about? Italian real soup. Can you guess? Because we are the
time Al Capone is right here, he is locked up in prison Yeah, one type and you know a spirit bar He is dying very slowly here behind these bars It's true, yes, over there, you're the prison, he's not storming His only friend, a very aggressive warden And don't you understand, finally Al Capone Knows how it feels to be truly alone He killed his wife and he killed her family So now he understands the meaning of tragedy You can have the money and the drugs for a start But what good is material wealth when you got no heart? Was it social media, our Instagram and our website and everything is all North Coast NYC. We'll have a mailing list and some shirts if you want to chat with us out there. We also teach classes, so sign up for our mailing list. That's the best way to find them. And I'm clearly out of breath, so I'm going to stop talking. We'll see you guys soon. Event and corporate events. So, it, actually, they'll come back on October to do a home. Uh, actually, they perform for Leadership in Montgomery's uh, homecoming gala. Okay, yes. so other than profits or any corporation want them to perform for you guys, uh, send me an email. I can help you out. Um, and also about the, uh, the the free financial review. I already got a few emails, so there is still about six spots left. So if you want one that reviews, send me an email or submit a request. Okay? And I wish everybody have an awesome evening! <laughs>